welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori. And I'm starting the vlog. It's Saturday. It's 11 o'clock. I just went to the post office and I have some friend mail to share with you. First, I got a bunch of Christmas cards to open. So I'll do that when I get home. And then I bought stamps. <laughs> <laughs> All my post office has left are frog stamps. So I'm now declaring the Christmas frog. And I got a gift. Oh, thank you. This is from Sarah. Sarah, thank you so much. I'm excited. They are two cross stitch kits. One of them is the red truck that I'm absolutely obsessed with. And it comes with fabric and it's a whole kit guys it comes with everything isn't that exciting I can't wait to start this so that's the first one I didn't even open the second one yet and the second one is and they have hoops and everything so I can work on them at the same time because I'm like that right and the second oh how adorable it's a Merry Christmas kit and it has the pattern. It has everything that we'll need. How exciting. Thank you so much, Sarah. I really appreciate this. And y'all are so kind to me. It just warms my heart. I was telling the post office lady when she said they were out of stamps. I'm like, we're gonna take this as a good thing. You know, that people are slowing down. Yeah, we're in a coronavirus, but sorry for the crinkling unless you like it and then I don't mind crinkling. Oh, I'm so excited. Um, the people are slowing down and communicating with each other using the mail system. You know, we have to look for good things in everybody. Oh, who is this one from? And this is says, oh, I don't, wait, wait. Oh, it's also from Sarah. Thank you so much. And this is a diamond painting kit. I've never done this before. I don't want to open it because I think there's, yeah, there's little stuff. We're going to try this out. Maybe we should try it out together. And it's a Christmas one. How fun. I can't wait. Sarah, thank you so much. That is so kind of you. I don't have your address, but if you message me, I'll send, I want to send you a thank you note. But thank you so much, guys. We've got stuff to do today. I've already done one errand. I I woke up this morning and had to work a little bit. It's This is actually my busiest time of the year at my job. I feel like Santa, except for I don't, I work in default. So folks that default on their loan. So it's not really like Santa, but it's our busy time of the year. So I have some errands to run. I have my list somewhere in here, part of my list anyway. And I just wanted to show you what I made. It's called a chubby tote. And it was so easy. It's ducking in here, and then this is just fabric with a um, lining. If, um, if I remember, I'll link down below. I found this on a YouTube channel, and it's just called the chubby tote. And it's all straight stitching. I made this, I made my straps longer because I like them longer, but I made one for somebody for a gift for Christmas, but I had enough material to make a second one for me. So it's a perfect library tote, throw everything together. So yeah, I have that. I am off next to Goodwill. I have a bag of clothes to donate and then we'll keep going and see what we can get into. I definitely want to make Christmas cookies sort of today. Um, I bought pre-cut dough at my, G it's called GFS. It's a store here that sells like for restaurant equippers. But um, I bought a box of pre-made, pre-cut sugar cookies. They're real thick and fluffy ones. I have a neighbor that has three little ones. Um, and I mean like little, like probably three or four, five and seven. So they're young. But I'm gonna make them a cookie decorating kit and drop that off to them. So I have all the supplies almost. I just need to get powdered sugar to make some buttercream frosting. I'm gonna make homemade frosting. And I'm gonna drop that off today. So we'll make those. Cookies need to be baked. Yeah, so we're gonna get into it. But now it's off to Goodwill.
Okay, we're gonna open up the boys' advent calendar. Today's the first. This is from Aldi. Super, oh, I'm breaking it apart. Well, that's okay, we'll get it together. I, this year they're gonna share, but because we didn't know what was involved. Ew. How cute. So they get a little bag of treats. That's day one, okay. They probably will get a little bag of treats every day. And then the dog gets two bones because we got Sarah one for Luna. Come here, boys. Okay. <laughs> Hold on, here we go. Here you go, that's yours. There you go, Debbie. Here, that's yours right there. Do they like them? Let's see. Hmm. Well, Alex seems to like it. I'm not sure about Dub. He's not impressed. Here, who has your treat? It's a treat for you. And it comes with one, two, three, four, five little treats. Here, Alex, you can have that one. There you go. Here, Dub, you want this one? There you go. He said no, which is why I only bought one. Here you go, Alex. I'll get Debbie some more treats, but that's day one, yay! Hi, Alex. What are you doing? I am wrapping gifts, hence the mess over here. Am I the only one that has to leave a tunnel under the tree or the cats make their own? <laughs> so they have to be able to get back in there. Well, Wellington's sleeping in his little basket. Alex is playing with his little toys and I am wrapping gifts. Hi, Alex. What are you doing, baby? You're so pretty. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, back to wrapping. We are back singing Christmas carols. I'm doing some batch bacon, guys. Here, I'll show you what I'm doing. This is a recipe, and unfortunately, I can't share the recipe. It's a purchased one. But if you search, if you're keto, or I guess gluten free, and you search cooking keto with Christy, or there should be a link below that I'm not 100% sure, but I know there you can search her. This is rolls without rolls. And it will bake in the silicone pan. And it will be um, like, a not a dinner roll, but like a bun. This is the shape I'm baking them in. So it, it'll go up and it'll make a roll without rolls. Get it? <laughs> I get it. So it'll make, I don't know, five of this size, maybe really it makes four and a half. If I'm being honest here, I mean, it's not being dishonest, but I like them a little thicker, right? Except that this one will be really thin and I use that as a single layer. So like I'll toast it and do something with it. So you don't want to be wasteful. But if I fill these too full, um, they will blow over the top. So we don't want that. Then I just schmooze them out. They should be just right under. But anyway, I'm making four batches. So I'll get sandwich size. One, two, three, four, four is eight, 16. Yeah, I'll get about 16 of my rolls and they get frozen. And I keep them in my kitchen freezer. And then when, um, I just gotta flatten them down a little bit and they bake. I'll have 16 rolls to make, um, you know, sandwiches or whatever. I've been doing a terrible job in life. <laughs> and I, I say that justly, but I've been, 
eating pork rinds a lot for dinner and pepperoni and cheese. So I stay on plan, but it's not the most nutritious. This is just cream of tartar. You use that when you beat egg whites. And <laughs> let me show you. And then I got to use the mixer here. This is how I batch cook. So each recipe really has to be done independent of each other. So these are all the ingredients that'll go into each batch. So I have, four, I just did one. So I have four set up over there. Isn't that crazy? But ooh, that's how I do it. Because like I said, these can't be, um, I need my apron, so I'm gonna get messy. These can't be like, do a, a quadruple batch. It doesn't work that way. Keto baking is a little different than regular, but you really have to, plus I don't have the pans to do it and they would, the eggs would deflate because I'm gonna whip up the eggs and then I'm gonna beat the other stuff and then fold it all together. All right, so that's what I'm making now is bread. And then I'll bring you back when I do something different. I don't know, we'll see. All righty, friends, we are at the point. I finished my bread. I'll show you here in a second what it looks like. But next up, I'm gonna make, it's called fat head dough. You could also do this with biscuits. You could do it with anything. You like pizza dough, crescent roll dough, whatever. I'm using fat head dough because it's something that I can have. Fat head dough is keto friendly. It's made with almond flour, cream cheese, mozzarella cheese, and an egg. Nothing. Let me put that here. I gotta wash my hands right quick. Um, it's made keto friendly, basically. So what I'm going to do is make the fat head dough, put it in the same pan I used for the rolls, and I'm going to um, put sausage and egg in it, and it's going to be delicious. So right now I'm just cooking up the sausage. I need to go through all my utensils, but I'm going to cook up my sausage. Oh, my shirt says I run on coffee and Christmas cheer. And I wanted to show you, this is what my my roll looks like. So it's just like a dinner roll or a biscuit and then I stick it on a square of parchment and I put them in a zip bag, zip top. Hold on, I'll show you, I'm zipping it up. And I seal it. And this one has eight rolls in it, or biscuits, or whatever you want to call them. They're pretty Unitarian. Um, what's going on over here? I'm smelling something funny. But I don't... Oh, is that the oven that I'm smelling? Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, um, I use these for pizzas, like English muffin pizzas. I use them for sandwiches. I may use them for garlic bread. I just use them. So... Having 16 in my freezer, not a hardship. They last pretty long in the freezer. So yeah. Right now I'm gonna cook up this sausage and then I'll make the fat head dough because you gotta work with the fat head dough pretty quickly and this is not ready. So I'll cook this up and then I'll mix up some eggs and then mix it in, in cheese and mix it all together and you'll see. I'm gonna make a little, I don't even know what it would be. It's a concoction that I came up with, right? But for now, that's what we're doing. I just wanna get some food in my freezer and in my belly, cause I'm hungry, but mostly I wanna have food in the freezer. There, done. So that um, grab and go, especially during the holidays, even though I'm not really going anywhere, I am pretty busy. So I wanna have pre-made foods that I can enjoy. But I can't do the dough yet until I have this cooked and cooled. So that'll be the next step. All right, we're gonna make the fat head dough. And what that is, it's a keto friendly, low carb dough that you work with. Here's the ingredients. One cup and a half of shredded mozzarella cheese, cup and a half. Two tablespoons of cream cheese. 
and one cup of almond flour, right? Now, I'm gonna tell you, this is how I make mine. Oh, and an egg, but the egg goes in at the end. So I'm just letting it come to room temperature. This is how I make mine. Some people melt their cheese first, melt it, melt it. Then they work in the almond flour. Then they work in the um, egg. Yeah, I'm lazy. So I'm gonna put this in the microwave and let it come up and get, I do 30 seconds at a time until everything is melted and combined. Then I add the egg and I've not had a problem. I've even used my mixer to do this and I've not had a problem. So that's how I do it. I am not even adding seasoning to this because the sausage is very seasoned. You could add, at this point, you could add um, Italian seasoning, garlic, whatever you want to make it taste like a pizza crust, whatever. I'm not flavoring the crust. Actually, I am putting in just a tad bit of salt because it does need that. But I'm not adding anything season-wise because my sausage that I'm using to fill it is full of flavor. So I'm gonna microwave this and I will show you what it looks like when it's done in the microwave. Okay. It really does look like dough, that's it. All I did was melt it, every 30 seconds I stirred it. At first you're gonna be like, this is never coming together, but it is. And that's what we have. I don't know how many times I did it. I have a room temperature egg. That's really gonna help you here. If you don't have a room temperature egg, just put it in a cup of hot water while you're melting the cheese. That's all I did, but it brings it to temp. Cause if not, you're gonna kind of be counterproductive. So I could do this for hours, but honestly, I'm just gonna use my hands. And it's warm, so you really wanna be careful, but it's kind of the point. It needs to be melted to be pliable. Depending what you're doing with this, different level of coolness. Sometimes I'll take this dough and wrap it around hot dogs and then I freeze it before I bake it so it doesn't melt. It kind of cooks and holds its shape. That is certainly always an option. A pizza crust, you would tap it out into a pan, right? And then you would bake it. What I'm doing, I'm gonna bake it, I'm not gonna bake it ahead of time. I'm gonna put it in this pan with the egg mixture on top and bake it at once together. Okay, so that is ready. I'm just going to get this out of my way. I'm gonna put, I wanna break this into six equal pieces, I guess, or as equal as I'm gonna get. I may have a lot more dough than I need. And if that's the case, I'll just make something else. I may not, I don't know. I just wanna, like I know that's too much here. I'm just gonna flatten it into this pan to do the bottom crust the sides as well this is a silicone baking sheet if you see that it's sticking to your hands you can wet your fingers if it starts getting here we go if it starts getting too room temperature you can always put it back in the microwave and soften it up a little bit absolutely there's a hundred things you can do with this dough and it really depending on how you season it it's pretty, it's pretty bland if I had to say a word. It's just almond flour. Mozzarella cheese doesn't bring too much flavor to the table. And um, cream cheese is kind of, you know, bland. So you could do this like, I guess, sweet, I would say. I have not, you can. You would just need to add sweetener to it. I know some people have made cheese danishes with this crust, so I guess you can do it sweet. I just haven't. All I really wanna do is give myself a base for my um, sausage and egg mixture. Now I did add to the sausage mixture and I'll show you here in a minute because I'm gonna fill these little cups up. And I'm just gonna let all this bake together. But what I did is I added five eggs to a bowl, because there's six cups here, but I also have sausage. So I added five eggs. 
I say cups, but they're, it's really a cake mold is what it is. Um, I mix the drained, I drained the pound of sausage. That's important. You don't want to put all that grease in here. I drained the sausage. Oh, I think I'm going to have just enough guys. I drained the sausage and I added the five eggs and then I added a couple handfuls of shredded cheddar cheese. And that's it. That is the sausage portion. I wanted it pretty thick and you'll see. So when I spoon it in here, you know, it'll fill the cavity, but not overfill it because this will probably puff up and over if I had to guess. I haven't made this before. I should say that, right? Like I'm, you're, I'm bringing you along on my experiment here. All right, so one batter made six of these. You could do this in muffin tins. There's no reason you can't. I just liked this shape and I already had the pan out. So now my hands are messy, so I'm gonna clean them. But once you're at this step, it can sit here. It doesn't matter what temperature it is. I just wanna get it up the side. And the reason I stuck egg in with the sausage is so it will form almost like a custard or a quiche consistency. I guess this would be a quiche if I had to call it something. All right, I made a quiche. There, we named it. Let's wash in the hands. Guys, my hands are going to be so dry tonight. I'm going to have to put on extra lotion. But I'm going to have plenty of meals that I can just grab and go which is really what I want. Right? Right. Okay. So let, oh, over here. I missed the side. I really kind of want them up the side, but it doesn't matter if it's not. I think they were sinking in on themselves because it's still pretty warm, but it, it's fine. Everything's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We're all fine. It's all fine. Right? And now it's not even sticking to my hands. Okay, so I'm gonna put it back in its pan because you definitely want to bake this on a baking sheet. You do not want this mixture spilling. So this is it. I wanted it pretty thick as it is, right? And if I have any extra, I'll just bake it separately as a quiche, crustless quiche. So I'm just taking a couple scoops kind of pushing it down in there because unlike pizza crust, real pizza crust or um, pie crust, which I guess I'm mimicking a pie crust here. It kind of stays in the shape you put it in unless it's melting and then this dough might spread out a little bit, but it certainly isn't gonna like do anything spectacular. It, it is what it is. So that's why the egg mixture in here. So it's a lot thicker than what a quiche would be, but this is just how I want it. If you want to just egg, you could certainly do that too. You could put this in a pie pan and make it like that. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have a lot of extra filling. So I have to decide, do I want to make another batch of the fat head dough? Probably, and make another batch of these because I do have plenty. We'll see how this bakes up, but I have plenty of filling to make another batch. Or I could just bake it alone and call it, but we'll see. Let's bake this first batch and see what it does. I think that's a fabulous idea, fabulous. Okay. So I have to, oh, I forgot to turn the other one. Okay, well, I'm gonna heat up the oven. <laughs> and while the oven is heating up, I will think about what I'm gonna do. Because I definitely have enough to make another batch and I know they will freeze well because I have frozen this dough before. Hmm. Yeah, we're gonna make another batch. All right, I made a second batch of the dough and we're gonna, have to get moving here because I tried to put it in a smaller pan and that was a no-go, right? So I'm gonna wet my hand because it's sticky and that will help it not be sticky. If you let it get like I did and it's cool because I had to transfer pans, 
but I feel, I feel like a success is coming. I feel like, yeah, I can do this. Just a little firmer than I usually work with it, but guys, not everything is perfect, right? So what I'm going to now do, I'm just pushing it into this pan, just like you would. And like I said, if you want to do this with pie crust, do it. If you want to do this with pizza dough from a can, do it. You can use crescent rolls pressed out into a pan. Anything will work, any dough that you choose. I happen to be keto, so this is the dough that I choose. This is another, just the same batch of a fat head. And I've decided I'm gonna make a pan of it this way. And I'm just going up the sides a little bit because I don't want it overly thick on the bottom, right? So I'm just going up the sides. I have the other one in the oven and it looks good. They're just taking a little longer to cook than, you know, than I want to wait around for. Plus, I can freeze the individuals and use this for meals this week and freeze whatever I don't eat because this is going to be a lot. There we go. Okay. Have to wash our hands because this is a little bit on the messy side. Just saying. Wash, wash, wash. Okay done. I didn't even wash the other pan, the other bowl. I just reused it. Okay. I'm going to have to run my dishwasher here in a minute. This will probably be a little thinner layer of the meat mixture, but I don't care. Right? It's fine. And if you wanted to, you could just add more eggs to this. Or you could just do one batch and fill this whole pan with the quiche topping. That's what we're calling it. Is it quiche technically? No. What I could do is just crack some eggs on here to bake too, but that's not necessary. Just doing a thin layer. This will actually cook a little quicker too because the eggs are thinner on here. Oh, but I know what I'll do just to make this one a little different. I'll put some Parmesan on it maybe. Maybe not. No more cheese. Okay, that's it. Done. Put it on my pan. And I'm just waiting for the other one to come out of the oven. I'm baking them at 350. This one's been in here for about 15 minutes and it's almost done. So when I pull that one out, I'll put this one in and then I'll show you both of them when we're done. Welcome back. Welcome back. Here's my trash can. Okay, guys, we're baking cookies. And I want to show you how I do it this year. It's different every year. This is how I'm doing it right this second. Some years I do gingerbread cutouts. This year I'm not about that life. So I'm going to go with, through with you how I get uniform shaped cookies, right? Because doesn't everybody want their cookies the same size? <laughs> Probably not. But if you're like me, you do. I've got butter softening back here for the next batch of cookies I'm going to be doing. I'm doing snickerdoodle this year. I'm doing gingerbread. I am doing chocolate chip. And then I'm doing um, cut out sugar cookies that I bought pre-made as well. So I love this Betty Crocker mix. I am telling you, you cannot find a better gingerbread cookie recipe than this. It is so easy. One stick of butter, a tablespoon of water, and an egg. You mix it up. If you want to do dough, you roll it, blah, blah. We're doing cookies today. And I'm literally following the recipe. But what I'm doing is I have a cookie scoop. It's a portioner. So every cookie should be proportionately the same size. Are they going to be exactly the same size? No. But are they going to be in the same general size? Yes. The one thing you want to be careful of is this over scoop. So, you know, maybe I'm a little particular, but I want my cookies to look good. And so, yeah, that's what I'm doing. So the recipe, the bag says, portion them out. Now I spread mine a little further than the bag says, but that's okay. I want to get 
a dozen cookies. Now you can push it with your thumb and that just kind of gets it all the way up into the tippity top or just push it on the side of your bowl, right? So if you do it this way, make sure your pans are cool. If it says refrigerate your dough ahead of time, refrigerate your dough ahead of time. All right, somehow I'm a cookie shy, but that's okay. And for the record, I don't even eat these cookies. Now, the recipe or the thing says, get some sugar in a jar, in a cup, dip it in the sugar. Let me get you down here. I'm just, it, it already had cookie on it, so there's butter. And then you just push these down. Now you don't have to do this to all the cookies that you bake, this recipe, directions say that I should do this. And if you look at the ones on my pan, they don't spread, which is nice. Some cookies will tend to spread. Some want you to refrigerate before baking. You just have to make sure you're doing it. Just be very intentional, very slow about it. And I don't mean like turtle in the hair, but what I mean is make sure you're reading the directions before you get started. Oops. And then mine says bake for eight to 10 minutes. So set a timer. That's my other thing, set a timer. Now I'm putting my timer on for nine minutes. I happen to know that that will work. Then you let them cool on your tray. My cookie thing says let set before removing. And that's what I did. And that's what I'm doing. Now I'm putting them on a cookie tray to cool. It's really that simple. If I am baking my own, like if I'm mixing up my own cookie batter, I, I don't even need a thing. These are firm enough. I don't eat, I, I don't, um, I mean, I do refrigerate them. I refrigerate the dough to let it get firm before I bake, but this stuff didn't require it. And these are gonna be a little crunchy on the side and super soft and chewy in the center. And that literally is it. So now I have this pan here. I don't, it's still warm. I don't want to put cookie dough on a hot pan. That's the other thing. So I have a, a cooling rack behind me over here and I'm going to sit it on the cooling rack and let it cool while these are baking. These will go into the kitchen. I have the ceiling fan on to cool them and I just do a cycle. So the next batch of cookies I'm gonna make is chocolate chip. I'm gonna do the exact same thing, except for I don't have to push them down. I read the back of the directions. I don't need to squish them down, but they're all gonna be relatively the same size. And then I'm gonna make some frosting and I'll bring you along for the frosting. Let's make some whipped buttercream, friends, shall we? So what I have in here is two sticks of butter at room temperature, so they need to be out on your counter. A tablespoon of vanilla. I use real vanilla. Then I typically use a three pound bag of um, powdered sugar, but I have this in here, so it's fine. I know when it's ready. But one three pound bag, and this is a nice buttery buttercream. And then I add heavy cream, but I'm just gonna put, I think two cups to start, and then you just let it go. The first step we're gonna do is just let it, combine and I want to get it pretty soft the amount of cream you add really does depend on the humidity your powdered sugar so I can't really give you too much on that but I will add I mean up to a quarter of a cup because I like mine whipped really well and soft, but you also want it buttery. I'm putting all this powdered sugar in. I think if I remember, this is a three pound bag. So these are the cookies I'm gonna frost. I have some older neighbors and they're not gonna wanna frost their cookies. So they will just get cookies that I'm frosting for them. Isn't that kind? <laughs> there, I have some senior citizen neighbors you know, they can't see their families. I'm just dropping and running, I'm waving through the window. So they're safe, I'm safe. And I'm just, this is not my favorite cookie to give, I can tell you that. Because it gets sticky on top of each other, but 
I'll just put them on top and make him deal with the mess. Right? <laughs> Isn't that the Christmas spirit? No, I'm kidding. I will let them sit on this tray while I finish the other trays and let it do its, ooh, let it do its thing. I just have one of these sprinkles. And here's the hint with that. You really want to sprinkle, ooh, well, okay. You really want to sprinkle while the frosting is pretty wet still, right? Because if you don't, it's just not going to stick. Unfortunately, fortunately, however you want to look at it, it won't stick if you don't do it right away. So let's see, let's pick our next one while we're, how about some red and green sugar? And I just put a fair amount on, it doesn't matter to me. I'm not gonna eat this, so I'd rather use all the frosting. And I did wash my hands, right? Because that's what we do. There we go. So I'll do some red, some green, yeah, I mean, and this this cookie dough is really good. I remember this from when I did eat sugar, and I get it at GFS, and it's preformed. It's great if you're gonna have the grandkids over, your little neighbor kids, nieces, nephews, adults. It's just so much less work to use these already cut out shapes. I'm just saying from experience, okay. I know this because I've done the cookie thing for years with my young people and I love doing it, but it's a lot of work for a really quick, okay, we're done, what's next? And these are $10 and you get a box of 72 cookies, right? So that's pretty cool too, that they're reasonably priced. All right, what are we doing next? We'll do some jimmies, I suppose. Jimmies, sprinkles, I don't know what you call them. When I lived in Massachusetts, I learned to call them jimmies and that's what I call them. Sprinkles, oh, my kitties are wanting me. Sprinkles, jimmies, whatever. Oh, open that up a little more. There we go, that's it. I'm gonna let these dry and pack up my bags. We are ready to go. So. This is gonna be for the little girls. I have this container and it has a bunch of frosting in it. Probably more frosting than they need, but that's okay. They can make their own cookies and use that frosting. So I'm just filling up the bottom. I have this plate that says cookies for Santa. I wanna put that in there. I have their frosting. Over here. And then they're cookies, and this is just a bag of unfrosted cookies. And then I got for them these pink sprinkles because there's four little girls that live over there. So I think that is a fun little kit. And then what we'll do is, now I could get them more cookies, but let's not hype up other people's children, right? And they're, like I said before, they're little. I'm just opening up one of these bags. And this is a, a big bag, but I can make it work. Okay, so then you stick it down in here. I didn't have to put it in a bag, to be honest, but I just thought it would be fun for the kids. Now I'm gonna leave that, those sides down so I'm gonna tape it to the bottom. And because this is already decorated, I'm just gonna tie it up with some baker's twine, right? I know it's loose, but I'm gonna tighten the bottom. Now I made these tags that say Merry Christmas from Lori. With, and then I'm gonna on there and I gotta go grab some tape real quick hold the phone hold on okay when you're doing a gift like this and the basket doesn't quite fit you take these corners 
and you tape them underneath and it tightens everything up so it looks better so just take a little piece and tape it down and there we have it a pretty little gift basket for my neighbor's little girls and I'll go drop it off here in a minute I'll just cut it off like that and there's one okay the next one is for a smaller tray right so I'm gonna give them they just have one little girl so I'm gonna push this to the side and I'm just gonna put some unfrosted cookies in here for them and she's gonna get the red and green sprinkles in there where's my other bag And then we're going to slide this one in this way. And I'm going to do it right to the corner. Did I, again, do I need to do this? No. Do I want to do this? Absolutely. Because they're adorable. And Christmas is not the same this year, right? So let's try to make it fun. And putting my little tag on this one. And this also keeps it airtight. Cut that off. We're gonna cut this off. Now, because it's kind of plain here at the end, I have a bow. And that's it. And then I'm gonna put some bags together and I will show you the bags. I'm just gonna put cookies in them and tie them up with a um, ribbon and my tag. Those are for the adults. So there we have it for one more neighbor. So I'll be back. All right, here we go. We have two cookie kits. Oh, this one's tipping. I got it, please don't worry. Two cookie kits and then I have eight bags of little cookies. And I will tell you those parchment papers from the Dollar Tree for freezing work great in cookie bags for the frosted cookies. But that's how everything looks. I love how these turned out. They're just simple. You know, there's probably a dozen cookies in there. So now I'm headed out.